Hi everyone and welcome to Insulin for Dummies. Hi, today we're going to be talking about regular insulin. I'm Olivia, I'm going to be your host, host today on Insulin for Dummies. Regular insulin is known under the trained names Humulin R and Novolin R. The mechanism of action is it promotes the uptake of glucose from the blood to the liver and skeletal muscle to be used as energy. Now, indications for regular insulin are diabetes myelitis type 1 and type 2. And roots of administration are normally sub-Q in the fatty parts of the stomach, the backs of the arms, the legs, um, but regular insulin is the only insulin that can be given IV. And blood sugar must be taken before administration. Now I'm gonna pass it off to Jakey to explain the usual dosage adverse effects and side effects. To you, Jakey. Thank you, Olivia. Hi, my name is Jakey, and today I'll be talking to you about the dosage, side effects, and adverse effects of taking regular insulin. So first off, let's talk about the dosage. Um, the first thing you should know is that there's two concentrations of regular insulin. The first one would be U100, which just stands for 100 units per milliliter. And then there's U500, which is 500 units per milliliter. So the first thing you should know is that U500 is a very strong concentration of insulin, and it's only given to patients who have a very um, high resistance to insulin and need more than 200 units of insulin per day. And you should also educate your patients on the symptoms of an insulin overdose because it is, again, a very strong insulin. So when we're talking about the dosage of insulin, it really depends on the individual's blood sugar. So your insulin could be increased or decreased depending on your blood sugar levels. So cases where your insulin dosage would be increased would be periods of infection, stress, obesity, growth spurts, um, and after the first trimester of pregnancy. Cases where your insulin dosage would be decreased would be when a patient skips a meal, um, when there's an increase in exercise, and during the first trimester of pregnancy. For type 1 diabetics, the typical ranges would be 0.5 to 0.6 units per kilogram per day. Um, for type 2 diabetics, the typical range would be 0.2 to 0.6 units per kilogram per day. But once again, you want to make sure you check your blood sugar before um, receiving insulin because, again, you can decrease or increase your insulin dosage. So the second thing we're going to talk about is the side effects and adverse effects of taking regular insulin. First one would be hypoglycemia, which is when your blood sugar is under 70 milligrams per deciliter. Um, this could be caused by insulin overdose, so receiving too much insulin for what your body needs. Um, hypoglycemia symptoms would include tachycardia, palpitations, sweating, and nervousness. So this would be an activation of your sympathetic nervous system. Um, if you don't have that crazy of those symptoms, you can have mild symptoms of hypoglycemia, which would be headaches, confusion, fatigue, and dizziness. The next adverse effect that you can have is hypokalemia, which is when potassium follows glucose, and this means that if you have lower levels of glucose, you would also have lower levels of potassium. So you want to educate your patients or just look after your patients' um, potassium levels. The next adverse effect that could happen is lipohypertrophy, which occurs if insulin is administered in the same site um, too often. And this is just a accumulation of fat um, since insulin does stimulate fat synthesis. And this usually goes away once you stop um, administering insulin in the same spot. And the last adverse effect that could happen, which is really rare, but Allergic reactions could happen, um, and it starts off with an appearance of red and itchy welts on your skin, um, and there could be a difficulty in breathing, so you just want to be aware and tell your provider. So when looking at these adverse effects, um, hypoglycemia can be really dangerous. It could cause things like coma, um, brain damage, or even death, so you do want to treat it um, rapidly. And um, another adverse effect that could happen is ketoacidosis. Um, and this is when a patient becomes hyperglycemic. So there's too much insulin administered. So it's always a sliding scale when um, putting in administering insulin. So 
again, you want to watch out for your patients and look at the signs and symptoms that they are going through. Thank you for listening and back to Olivia. Thanks, Jakey, for a great explanation. Now we're going to pass it on to Riley to go over the nursing implication, the pregnancy category, and patient education. Thanks, Olivia. Um, so my name's Riley, and I'm going to be talking about some of the nursing implications for regular insulin. So to start off, you always want to monitor your blood sugar levels, and you always want to monitor for any adverse effects that you may be experiencing, such as hypoglycemia, ketoacidosis, and injection site irritation, and always make sure to talk to your doctor about any of these adverse effects. And then you always want to make sure that your patient knows what the medication they are on, why they're on it, how to administer it, and then some of the adverse effects that they have to keep their eye out for. And then you always want to monitor the patient's kidney health, heart health, foot health, and eye health because all of these systems can be affected by diabetes. And then always make sure to be extra careful with your geriatric patients when taking regular insulin because um, they can be at a higher risk for hypoglycemia, so just monitor them a little bit closer. And then I'm also going to talk about some patient education. So when you're injecting insulin, you always want to make sure that you use a different site for each injection. You don't want to do two, you don't want to do the same site two times in a row. And then you do not want to inject your insulin in an area of skin that is damaged, such as having a cut there, a bruise, a scar or a hard lump and then you always want to eat a meal within 30 minutes after taking your insulin and then when injecting your insulin make sure it's in a fatty area of your body such as the inside of your arm here your abdomen or your thigh and then with the vials of insulin always make sure that you keep unopened vials refrigerated and then you can keep your open vials up to one month and make sure to keep them out of direct sunlight and extreme heat. And the last thing I'm going to be talking about is um, pregnancy when taking insulin. So with regular insulin, it is rated in, a pre in pregnancy category B. And in this category, it means that it is low risk for pregnancy and in studies, in animals shown that it has failed to demonstrate a risk, to the, a risk to the fetus and there are no adequate or well-controlled studies in pregnant women. So this means that it's relatively safe, but again, always make sure to tell your doctor if you're um, experiencing any adverse effects. Thanks for a great explanation, Riley. And that's all we have for you today, folks, on Insulin for Gummies.